Chongju, South Korea's Little Museum of Southeastern Korea. I'm going to experience it firsthand. I'm going to breathe in the air. Well, Gokusa Temple, one of Korea's treasures in the southeastern province of Gyeongju. Now, if this is located in Thailand, it would be a timeshare condominium development by now. But here in Korea, it is a World Heritage Site, originally built in 751. It's now 1,260 years old and renovated to its present splendor in 1973. Let's go enjoy it. Well, Goksa Dabo Top has a special significance in the Korean mindset. It is on the rear side of the Korean Taiwan coin. But here, you have to have zero cash in the pocket to enjoy it. Kids play games on the temple premises, combining bonding with enlightening. Buddha had a huge influence. I'd say he had more of influence than the Beatles. People in Korea worship the ground he walked on. People in Thailand worship the ground on their walk on. And here is an enlightenment hall. They say that if you go in there, meditate about 10, 15 minutes a day for a week, you're on the fast track to enlightenment. If you pet this pig, it brings three years of good luck. But if you kiss the pig, 10 years. And a good pork barbecue free for five years. Even the toilets at this temple have been restored to majestic splendor from the 13th century. But these older toilets still get the approval from the Korean Toilet Association. Visiting aged Korean temples is an activity for the whole family, like going out for pizza in the West. You want some Bacardi sweat, sir? <laughs> no, I don't want this Bacardi sweat. I want to drink pure, fresh mountain spring water from the temple. Green kids come here by the busloads to learn about their rich and diverse histories. Luang Temple, another hallmark of Green kids flock here to pay their respects to their elders and give cash to their teachers. Very sacred place. It goes back another 1,250 years. We are at Wog Yong Bridge, the renovated bridge. This used to be the road, the toll road that Koreans had to pay the emperor some big bucks in order to pass and now they're renovating it and if they finish it by the year 2014 as expected they're going to be charging hefty tolls once again. In Heijong, this was one of the Silla palaces, Wolji Lake right there, it's a geese and duck lake and you fresh geese and duck farms are there. You can have fresh geese and duck every single night if you know the right people. Yeah. When you're in Kwangju, part of the experience is to have a vegetarian feast. You do that not in a typical vegetarian restaurant, but in a temple cuisine restaurant. What they do is they try to emulate the food monks, all monks would eat on a starvation diet. It's going to be a long time experience eating here. Now inside, it doesn't look anything like a temple. It actually looks like a traditional Korean restaurant. Different rooms, sliding doors, the low tables, the green tea. But it's an all vegetarian experience and they promise you that when you walk out of it, You'd be as enlightened as you would be if you meditated for five days in a Korean Buddhist temple. The menu features a lot of the monk favorites, you know, bip and bob with wild vegetables, potato, monkey pancake, and some of the things you didn't think monks had. Mulberry wine, rice wine, there's even the occasional beer, but only the brands of beer the monks like. You can order a la carte or just select the top item. Korean table dote, which includes every other dish on the menu in a seven course tasters menu for slightly more than $14. Even the menu cover is meant to enlighten. After Kyungju, it's a two hour drive into the Korean countryside to see ancient temples made out of funkier materials. We live in an age today where they say that newer is better, but sometimes I prefer to go older. Older is best. And when I want a taste of the old in South Korea, the oldest temples that are made out of wood, Bosiox is the place I thought I'd come. Come here for a picnic, come here to study ancient architecture, and when I want to become enlightened, I come here for that too. There is no temple like Bosiox. There are clay Buddhas for the kids, there's hot dogs for the adults, and there's even a ground where dogs and cats can roam freely. And then they have a masseuse who massages your cats and dogs. So I'd say as an overall temple, beauty and uh, convenience, Dusiox is the place. Directors come here to scout the perfect location for their next tearjerker soap opera. Buddhas are a dime a dozen in Asia. You can find a Buddha every two meters. But there's people thronging those Buddhas. When I want to pray to my Buddha, and I want to get real close, I don't want, to, I don't want a bunch of crowds competing for Buddha's attention, 
Lucy Ox is the place I come. Look, down there, nobody. I'm going to go up there and kiss Buddha. No one's going to stop me. If you want to get in shape, why go to a gym? Why go to the track? Come to Boosie Ox the Temple? Get all the workouts you need. Ah. The sea of pine trees are behind me at Biosos Temple. They say that uh, mythical creatures reside there. Unicorns and elves, dragons. Can you believe it? All the way up here in the Korean mountains?